Hello and welcome back to the Business English Podcast, your go-to spot for refining your English skills for the world of business. I'm thrilled to have you with us today for what is sure to be another episode filled with essential grammar tips, interesting exercises and real-world scenarios to help you in your professional journey. I hope you've been practicing because we're diving deeper into our exploration of English conditionals. So far, we've travelled together through the wonderful world of zero and first conditionals in part one, then took an exciting leap into the second and third conditionals in part two. And so today, we're reaching the pinnacle of our conditional climb with part three, focusing on the subtleties of mixed conditionals. Now, you might be asking, why mixed conditionals? Well, they say variety is the spice of life. And in English grammar, variety comes in the form of mixed conditionals. They are the special seasoning that adds richness and complexity to your English communication, especially in professional contexts. Mastering them can take your communication skills from good to world class. In this episode, we'll unravel the logic behind mixed conditionals, apply them in various business scenarios, and of course practice with our popular listen and repeat segments. And as always, there will be a homework challenge because we believe in learning by doing. So buckle up everyone, it's time to polish up your grammar skills, boost your confidence, and make your mark in the professional world. Let's dive into the captivating seas of mixed conditionals. But first, hook up the music. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Business English Podcast. Helping professionals communicate more effectively, more confidently, and with impact. With your host, Rob, from Energetic English. Let's get down to business. As we step into our language spotlight for today, let's unveil the mystery of mixed conditionals. Now, if you've been practicing your English conditionals, you're already familiar with the zero to third conditionals. But just when you thought you'd seen it all, here come the mixed conditional gang, the curveball of English grammar. Mixed conditionals, as the name suggests, are a cocktail of conditionals. They aren't bound by time constraints in the same way that other conditionals are, and that's what makes them so versatile and fascinating. In the realm of mixed conditionals, we primarily encounter two main types. First, we have those that deal with a present result of a past condition. I'll say that again, a present result of a past condition. And secondly, there are those that explore a past result of a present or continual condition. A past result of a present or continual condition. Now, imagine you're late for a critical meeting. You'd say, if I had left home earlier, I wouldn't be late. Here, the past action, leaving home, influences the present result, being late. This is an example of a present result of a past condition. Or let's say your company could have secured a deal if the market conditions were different. You'd express it like, if the market conditions were more favourable, we would have secured that deal. This is a classic example of a past result, securing the deal, of a present or continual condition, the market conditions. By using mixed conditionals, you'll not only sound more sophisticated, but also more precise in your expressions. They enable you to discuss hypothetical situations across different time zones, past, present and future in one swift sentence. So, are you ready to flex your grammar muscles a little more and dive into a series of business contexts where conditionals shine? Let's keep moving. Now, as we all know, in the realm of business, precision is key. And mixed conditionals, my friends, can be your secret weapon for that much needed precision in communication. They allow you to discuss hypothetical scenarios more effectively, which, as you might guess, is a cornerstone of any business strategy. Let's explore some real-world business scenarios where mixed conditionals play a crucial role. 
First off, let's talk about business negotiations. Picture this. You're at a negotiating table and the other party's offer is not exactly what you'd hoped for. You might say, if you had offered more flexible terms, we wouldn't be at an impasse. If you had offered more flexible terms, we wouldn't be at an impasse. And there you have it. A present result, being at an impasse, of a past condition, not offering more flexible terms. And so in this small yet mighty sentence, it shows how a past decision affects the present situation. Now, let's consider another one, a business planning and strategy session. In the world of business, we are always planning for the future, but sometimes it's the past that gives us a better understanding of our path forward. For example, if our sales were consistent, we would have hit our annual target. If our sales were consistent, we would have hit our annual target. Now, once again, this highly effective sentence helps us really nail the sentiment about a past result, hitting a target, due to a present or continual condition, being consistent. And lastly, let's turn to explaining business results or outcomes. Sometimes things don't go as planned, and as business professionals, we have to report and understand why. You might say, if the product had been tested thoroughly, there wouldn't be so many customer complaints. There we have it again, a present situation, customer complaints, being the result of a past condition, being tested more thoroughly. Now, do you see how mixed conditionals can help bridge the gap between two different time periods? They're a bit like your very own time-travelling device in language, don't you think? So, now that we've understood the theory and seen mixed conditionals in action, it's time to move to my favourite part, practice. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Now, before jumping into the next section, I wanted to take this opportunity to let you know that if you wanted to get more out of the Business English podcast, then that is possible. For example, full transcripts complete with timestamps so you never miss an expression, phrase-focused one-pages to quickly refresh your memory before that next last-minute meeting, pronunciation support to assist with the trickier elements of business English, live read-along transcripts, quizzes, and much more. If this sounds like it could be useful, then the Business English Podcast premium subscription could be for you. Check out the details at the link in the show notes. Right, on with the show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to dive headfirst into the exhilarating waters of practice. Remember, this isn't just about getting the grammar right, it's also about feeling the rhythm of the language and perfecting your pronunciation. So, are you ready to put your mixed conditionals to the test? Let's get started. I'll say each sentence twice, and then I'll leave a moment of silence for you to repeat it out loud, scribble it down, and really internalize these phrases. Okay, first one. If I had learned more about their company culture, I wouldn't feel so out of place now. If I had learned more about their company culture, I wouldn't feel so out of place now. Great, let's try another one. If we were in a different industry, we might have been affected by the new regulations. If we were in a different industry, we might have been affected by the new regulations. Fabulous. You getting the hang of it now? Let's keep going. If our team had stronger technical skills, we wouldn't be facing these delays. If our team had stronger technical skills, we wouldn't be facing these delays. Well done. Let's try one more. If the market was less competitive, we would have established a stronger presence by now. 
If the market was less competitive, we would have established a stronger presence by now. Awesome. Remember, practice makes perfect, so don't be shy about rewinding and trying these sentences again. So, I hope this exercise has helped you feel a little bit more comfortable with mixed conditionals. Now, I get they are tricky and can be difficult to get your head around, but keep practicing, you'll get there, I promise. As we begin to wrap up today's episode, let's take a moment to step back and bask in the glow of our newly acquired knowledge. Yes, we ventured into the complexities of mixed conditionals, and look at you, still standing, ready to face the business English world with new vigour and confidence. Today, we've learned that mixed conditionals are not bound by time in the way that other conditionals are. They allow us to jump between different time periods giving us a greater level of precision and flexibility in our communication. Remember, we primarily see two types of mixed conditionals. The first deals with a present result of a past condition, while the second addresses a past result of a present or continual condition. This might seem a little bit overwhelming, but just think back to our examples and practice sentences. With time and practice, these phrases will start to feel like second nature. We've also seen how mixed conditionals come into play in various business scenarios, such as during negotiations, planning, and explaining outcomes. So the next time you're in a meeting or drafting a business email, don't shy away from using a mixed conditional or two. You'll be surprised at the clarity it brings to your communication. And remember, practice is the key. The more you listen, repeat, and use these conditionals in your day-to-day -day communication, the more comfortable you'll get, so keep practicing. For this episode, a nice little follow-on exercise could be to come up with your own sentences using mixed conditionals based on scenarios from your own workplace. Think about a project you're working on, a recent meeting, or maybe a goal you're trying to achieve. For instance, if you're a marketer, you might say, if our budget had been larger, we wouldn't be struggling with our campaign reach. Or, if you're in HR, you might say, if the company was more flexible, we would have retained more employees. So, flex those English muscles and create your own examples. Record these sentences, listen back to them, and see if they make sense. This will not only help improve your pronunciation, but also solidify your understanding of mixed conditionals. And remember, there's no right or wrong here. This exercise is all about making the concept stick. So as we sail towards the horizon of this episode, I would just like to thank you for tuning in to the Business English Podcast today. If you found our journey through mixed conditionals helpful, don't forget to share this episode with your friends and colleagues. Remember, learning is more fun when you do it together. So until next time, keep practicing, stay curious, and of course, keep it strictly business. You have been listening to the Business English Podcast. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and we'll see you next time.